In New Jersey, how is a charter school approved? I'm Jill Horner. This is Comcast Newsmakers. With me this hour is New Jersey State Assemblyman Patrick Dagman. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Let's talk a little bit about how that process actually works. Charter schools are in local communities, but who actually approves them? Okay. Right now, it is exclusively the province of the Department of Education. At the state level? At the state level. Uh, local districts are given the opportunity for input, uh, the Board of Education, but the determining factor, uh, the decider, for lack of a better word, is the Department of Education. Now let's talk a little bit about a piece of legislation that you have that would actually give local districts approval process. Why do you think that this is important? Well, it's important to remember charter schools are public schools and public money, Board of Education money from the local district is used to support charter schools. The way it works is 90% of the money from, from the district follows the kid to the charter school. In my district, we have a charter school in East Brunswick. It's a Hebrew language charter school. The taxpayers of East, East Brunswick from the Municipal Board of Education budget are paying approximately a million dollars a year to support this charter school. And really that incident or event is the one that brought it to my attention. Everybody I speak to in East Brunswick does not support this charter school. And they cannot understand how the Department of Education approved it. So what I did is put in a bill, which to me is about as common sense as you can make it, is that there has to be a vote. Board of Education election day, there would be a vote by the municipality as part of the Board of Education. Do they approve of the charter school or do they not? <clears throat> Excuse me. In my mind, charter schools are not a bad thing. In, in the cities, uh, they may be needed. They may fill up specific needs. Some have a tremendous track record. But if a town doesn't want it, if you're in a town like East Brunswick or Highland Park or Princeton, it has a terrific education system as it is. Why in the world should public dollars be drained to a charter school that, that really basically there is no need for? So would this bill target these specialized charter schools in this instance, these Hebrew charter schools or Mandarin language charter schools, or would this be applicable to all charter schools? All charter schools. All charter schools. Now, the... the Commissioner-designee, Commissioner Surf, who, who I like, he seems to be a very nice man, he has indicated that this would kill charter schools. I don't buy into that. I mean, if, if a, you know, a city like Newark, where there is right now some real challenges in the education system, if the citizens want that option, they would support it. If they don't want that option, why in the world would you force it upon them? And again, in these boutique, as you just referred to, boutique charter schools, a Mandarin language charter school in Princeton, New Jersey, Princeton, which by nature implies a great education system, the, the, the residents don't want it. And by nature, a Mandarin language charter school, that's going to divide people. I mean, an average citizen is not going to want their or have a need for their kid to learn Mandarin language. So by nature, you're really doing an almost segregated uh, group of people, which is not what our public education is all about. So to me, it's just the most uh, common sense approach to this whole process. And also, and I know I'm talking to, this is becoming a monologue, but I do that. <laughs> also, uh, it makes the process stronger. I mean, if it really is a good idea, if the charter school is needed, let let those that are proposing it state their case. To the I want to talk a little bit about the actual process for getting into a charter school. It's a lottery-based process, but people actually have to apply for Correct. that lottery. Talk to us a little bit about that process, because you want to actually look into changing how that lottery yeah, works. The way it works right now is if you want your child to be eligible for a charter school, you have to apply to be put on the list for the lottery. We have a bill right now, which just got through the Education Committee with bipartisan support, that every kid in the district would automatically be eligible eligible for the lottery. Then if chosen, if they choose not to go, they could opt out. So that, by again, by nature is inclusive. It's not cherry picking. It's not dividing or segregating people. It's including everybody. And again, I think that makes the process a lot stronger. And why would you think that that's a better way to go for a lottery process? Again, public education. Public education should include and always has been the backbone of our democracy, every kid. By putting everybody in the lottery, by nature, it makes the whole process stronger. So if you have special needs kids, if you have kids with family issues, they are part of the, the lottery. It's not cherry picking. Thanks so much. Anytime, Jill. We've been talking with New Jersey State Assemblyman Patrick Dygman. I'm Jill Horner.